Heavy weights can help build muscle and strength, but they are not required. So you want to make sure that you have enough salt, potassium, and magnesium in your system if you want to perform well. It's very clear that moving weights or using bands or using body weight in the 30 to 80% of one rep maximum, that is going to be the most beneficial range in terms of muscle growth and strength. The other thing that's been shown over and over again, numerous well-controlled studies to improve muscle performance is creatine. Most people think the only way to build real strength is to train hard, train long, and push heavy weights. But according to Stanford neuroscientist Dr. Andrew Huberman, that's a myth. In fact, you can actually train less and still build more strength and muscle even if you're in your 60s, 70s, or 80s. The key? Just a few science-backed rules that change everything about the way we think about training. And in this video, we'll break down exactly what those rules are and how to use them to get stronger, faster, without wasting time or risking injury. Rule number one, you don't need heavy weights to build muscle. Most people think strength comes from lifting heavier and heavier weights, but that's not what science says. According to Dr. Huberman, heavy weights can help build muscle and strength, but they are not required. What one has to do is adhere to a certain number of parameters, just a couple of key variables that I'll spell out for you. And if you do that, you can greatly increase muscle hypertrophy, muscle size, and or muscle strength if that's what you want to do. And you don't necessarily have to use heavy weights in order to do that. In fact, research shows that lifting moderate loads anywhere from 30% to 80% of your one rep max can be just as effective for building muscle. What matters more than how heavy you lift is how much effort you put in and how well you contract the muscle. As Huberman explains, weights in a very large range can cause changes in the connections between nerve and muscle that lead to muscle strength and hypertrophy. So, whether you're using dumbbells, resistance bands, or even even your own body weight, you can build serious strength without ever maxing out. Rule number two, you only need five to 15 sets per week. Most workout plans are overwhelming four-day splits, 12 sets per session, 90-minute routines, but if you're over 60, that much training might actually hold you back. Perform anywhere from five to 15 sets of resistance exercise per week, and that's per muscle, and that's in this 30 to 80% of what your one repetition maximum. That seems to be the, the most scientifically supported way of offsetting any decline in muscle strength. If you're working in the kind of five set range and in increasing muscle strength, when you start to get up into the 10 and 15 set range. That's per muscle group, not per workout. The better you are at contracting particular muscles and in isolating those muscles, the fewer sets likely you need to do in order to get the desired effect. You can spread that volume out across the week. However, you like even just one or two exercises a few days a week is enough to maintain or grow muscle. Huberman also emphasizes this isn't just for elite athletes. These numbers are based on real world data tested on everyday people, not just pros. So if your goal is to build muscle and stay strong after 60, you don't need a full gym schedule. You just need the right dose. Rule number three, strength and size are not the same thing. One of the biggest mistakes people make, especially after 60, is training for muscle size when what they really need is strength or vice versa. Dr. Huberman explains the difference clearly. Whereas with strength, it's about using musculature as a system. The specific goal of hypertrophy is to isolate specific nerve to muscle pathways. In simple terms, if your goal is strength, focus on compound movements that train your body as a unit like squats, rows, and push movements. If your goal is size, you want slow, deliberate, isolated contractions that challenge a specific muscle. And the key insight, the better you are at contracting particular muscles, the fewer sets you need to get the desired effect. So instead of chasing reps or lifting heavy, focus on feeling the muscle work and choose your goal first strength or size. Rule number four, recovery is when muscle actually grows. Most people focus on their workouts, but forget that muscle doesn't grow during training. It grows after training, during rest and recovery. Recovery, that's when muscle grows, that's when muscle gets more flexible. None of that actually happens during training, it happens after training. And if you're over 60, recovery isn't optional, it's essential. Without proper recovery, you risk fatigue, injury, and stalled progress, no matter how smart your training is. Huberman also recommends two simple tools to assess whether your nervous system is recovered. Grip strength test, lower grip equals lower recovery. CO2 tolerance test. A short breath hold time may mean your system isn't ready yet. These are free at-home tools that can tell you, should I train today or give my body more time to rebuild? So if you're training right but still feel tired, weak, or stiff, it might not be your muscles that are the problem, 
It could be your nervous system telling you to rest. Rule number five, don't sabotage muscle growth with recovery mistakes. Some things that feel good after a workout might actually block your results. Two of the biggest culprits, ice baths and painkillers, NSAIDs. Dr. Huberman explains, if you're getting into the ice bath after doing resistance training, you are likely short-circuiting the improvements you're trying to create. Why? Because muscle needs inflammation to grow. Ice baths and NSAIDs reduce inflammation, which also reduces hypertrophy signaling, like the MTOR pathway. Huberman's warning is clear. Be cautious about your use of non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs, especially within the four hours preceding or the four hours following exercise. So while these tools might help with soreness in the short term, they can blunt the very adaptations you're working hard to build. The takeaway? Let your body recover naturally. Skip the ice, skip the pills, and let the inflammation do its job. Rule number six, creatine boosts strength and reduces fatigue. If there's one supplement that's consistently proven to boost strength, energy, and recovery, even in older adults, it's creatine. Dr. Huberman says, The other thing that's been shown over and over again, in numerous well-controlled studies to improve muscle performance is creatine. For somebody who's about 180 pounds, five grams a day should be sufficient. Creatine seems to have a performance enhancing effect. There are 66 studies showing that power output is greatly increased anywhere from 12 to 20%. And this is sprinting and running and jumping as well as weightlifting by creatine. What does it do? It helps your muscles produce more energy. It improves hydration inside muscle cells and it reduces fatigue, especially during resistance training. So if you're over 60 and want to build strength while training less, creatine is one of the most research-backed ways to support your goals. Rule number seven, leucine and protein are essential for muscle growth. Training stimulates muscle, but nutrition builds it. And one of the most important nutrients for older adults, leucine. Dr. Huberman explains, when it comes to supporting muscle, it does seem that ingesting 700 to 3000 milligrams of the essential amino acid leucine with each meal is important. Now that does not necessarily mean from supplements. Leucine is a key amino acid that triggers muscle protein synthesis, the process that helps your body repair and grow muscle tissue after exercise. While you can get it from supplements, Huberman emphasizes the importance of whole food. Most people recommend that you get your protein, your amino acids, including leucine from whole foods. He also shares a practical takeaway. Eating two to four times a day, making sure you're getting sufficient amino acids is going to support muscle repair, growth, and strength improvements just fine. And if you're plant-based, that's fine too. Just pay attention to protein density and make sure you're hitting your amino acid needs. So, if you're training less but want to build more, fuel matters and leucine is a big part of the equation. Rule number eight, salt and electrolytes improve nerve to muscle performance. Here's something most people overlook. Your muscles can't contract properly if your nervous system isn't firing the right signals. And for that to happen, your body needs one critical ingredient, salt. Dr. Huberman breaks it down. Nerve cells communicate with muscle by electricity. That electricity is generated by particular ions, and the rushing in of sodium salt is what allows nerve cells to fire. In simple terms, without enough sodium, your brain can't send strong signals to your muscles. Your strength suffers, your coordination drops, your performance crashes. If you don't have enough salt in your system, your neurons and your brain and your nerve to muscle communication will be terrible. That's why Huberman recommends making sure your diet includes the right mix of salt, sodium, potassium, magnesium. How much you need depends on factors like water intake, caffeine, sweating, and heat. But the key is not to be afraid of salt when you're training or active. If you don't have enough salt in your system, your nerve to muscle communication will be terrible. If you have sufficient salt, it will be excellent. So if you want better workouts and faster results even on a minimalist plan, don't forget the basics. Salt, water, and electrolytes matter. So here's the truth. You don't need to train harder. You don't need to lift heavy. And you don't need long, painful workouts to stay strong after 60. According to Dr. Andrew Huberman, one of the world's leading neuroscientists, you can build real strength and muscle by training less as long as you follow the right principles. Use moderate weights. Keep your weekly sets between 5 and 15. Recover fully. Fuel your body with creatine, leucine, and electrolytes. You don't necessarily have to use heavy weights to build strength and muscle, as Huberman puts it. Just train smart, eat well, and give your body time to rebuild. If this helped, give the video a like and make sure to subscribe for more science-backed fitness after 60. And let me know in the comments which of these rules will you try first.